Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the MMI Sky Hunter. This watch will be available from MMIwatches.com on pre-order from the 1st of December for €293. Euro. Now as this is a pre-production sample, it came in this plastic protective case, but I understand the production models will come in a microfiber leather watch roll. With regards to the items, this is the plastic warranty card that comes to the watch, and I'm pleased to report the Sky Hunter is covered by a 12-month international warranty. It's stamped by MMI. The production models will be filled in with a model number, serial number, and date of purchase. So, with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the MMI Sky Hunter. We have a 38mm case diameter. We have a 45.5mm lug to lug measurement, a thickness of 10.6mm and a lug width of 20mm. The Oyster style bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to 18mm at the two button push flip block clasp. As you can see the flip block is signed to a high standard with the MMI emblem engraved. Now I'm going to be critical of this. I think on a 38mm head of the piece they should have used the industry standard which is 20 to 16 that is the industry standard taper. Alternatively the standard is 22 down to 18. 20 to 18 isn't enough of a taper. Now this is subjective. Some collectors like straight and parallel oyster style bracelets but on a 38mm head of the piece 20 to 16 would have looked more aesthetically pleasing. With regards to the clasp it's solid milled 316L grade stainless steel, two button push triggers and we have a V-shaped flip block. I'll show you the interior. Solid mill 316L grade stainless steel, beautiful luster to the satin finishing, to the top side, underside and flanks, no sharp edges, no burrs and we don't have sharp corners so it's very well finished. Snap sharp with a nice positive click and there's a nice positive secondary click to the V-shaped flip block. Now I'm often critical in my previous reviews of clasps only having two or three micro adjustments. Credit where credit's due, MMI have made the correct decision by having five micro adjustment holes. So in the absence of half links in the Oyster style bracelet, five micro adjustments means that one can easily size the bracelet correctly to get the perfect fit. With regards to the rest of the specification, we have a flat sapphire crystal with clear AR coating on the underside. And the clear anti-reflective coating does an outstanding job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the silver mirror polished syringe hands. The syringe hands are correctly proportioned and they are fully infilled with Old Radium X1 Swiss Superluminova to a high standard as are the applied Arabic numerals. The dial is also fully loomed with Swiss Superluminova, perfect symmetry to the dial. The Arabic numerals are correctly proportioned and the minute ticks are very nicely painted on the dial on the chapter ring. Nice attention to detail because if you look closely at the chapter ring you can see there is a mirror polished step and that catches the light, it's very aesthetically pleasing but it's not reflective so it doesn't spoil the legibility of the dial. The dial in daylight conditions has a nice textured matte white finish to it but it's actually fully loomed with Swiss Superluminova and glows blue as I'll show you in the loom test. Now one of my favourite features of MMI watches including this Sky Hunter is rather than having a date window at 3 or 6 o'clock as per the convention they have a date wheel as you can see and it's fully indexed with Arabic numerals in black on the dial and we have a contrasting fluorescent orange date indicator so as you can see at the moment it's on the 22nd of the month and the fluorescent orange date indicator is clearly legible in daylight conditions. The mirror polished arrowhead second hand is correctly proportioned and it extends all the way to the minute ticks on the chapter ring which also have black Arabic numerals so the legibility, the symmetry and the functionality of the dial including the date wheel complication is very good and MMI deserve credit because this is a very well printed dial, the quality of the printing is very crisp and high definition. With regards to the bezel, it's solid 316L grade stainless steel, mirror polished and absolutely finished to perfection. Brass satin finish to the tops of the lugs, which complement the brass satin finishing to the flanks. The quality of the brass satin finishing, which is longitudinal on the flanks, is done to a very high standard, beautiful luster to the satin finishing. And that also complements the finishing to the bracelet. Brass satin finish on the top side, underside and flanks. Now the bracelet uses push pins which are a clear cost cutting measure. At this price point, €293, Euro, it puts it in the mid tier. And really I think mid tier pieces should have 
1.6 mm screw pins rather than the cost cutting measure of push pins as per low tier pieces below 100 euro. However, this is subjective. Some collectors like push pins, but on a positive note, the bracelet articulates very well. We've got no stiff links, so it doesn't kink and it doesn't have excess play in the push pins. It's very well executed. I think MMI could enhance this piece further by using female pivoted end links because it is a 38mm head of the piece and therefore best suited to collectors with a smaller wrist of 6-7 to seven inches. And it does have a lug to lug of 45.5 which is relatively short, it's below the sweet spot of 48mm but female pivoted end links would give a more snug fit because as you can see there is a large profile to the male end link and I think they should reduce this with a female pivoted end link to pull the end link in the bracelet closer to the wrist for a more snug fit on the 45.5 lug to lug. I'll show you the case back. Solid 316L grade stainless steel, engraved to a high standard as you can see and the engraving is very sharp but it doesn't scratch the wrist so they deserve credit because it's very good quality and they've also engraved the plane in the centre section to a high standard with a matte background. It's a very low profile case back bearing in mind this is an automatic rather than a quartz or manual wine piece and this is the benefit of using the Miota Calibre 9015 automatic. It is thinner than the NH35A so they've made the correct decision by using the 9015 versus the NH35A to reduce the thick of the overall thickness of the piece down to only 10.6 millimeters. It's a very flat and low profile case back and therefore fits very snugly to the wrist. The male end links are a good tight fit to the case and they're very well machined as is the underside to the flanks, no sharp edges to the undercut to the case. So the finishing to the head of the piece is excellent. Now I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now I haven't sized the bracelet and it's a tight fit to get it across my glove. So just bear with me and I'm going to remove my glove and then I'll be able to give you a wrist shot. Now as you can see without sizing the bracelet I can in fact fit my index finger underneath the bracelet and clasp at all times. So this will fit up to an 8 inch wrist with a loose fit as you can see. And that's with the micro adjustment on position 5 on maximum extension. So as you can see, nice snug fit to the wrist, 38mm is a compact head of the piece and 45.5 is a short lug to lug measurement. I consider 48mm to be the perfect lug to lug. At 45.5 this is short and therefore this will best suit collectors with a smaller wrist of 6 to 7 inches. If you have a larger wrist of 7 to 8 inches you may find that this doesn't have enough wrist presence and you would probably prefer a larger piece, a 40mm version would be good with a 48mm lug to lug. Now the taper really does need to be reduced from 20 down to 16 because as you can see on a 38mm head of the piece, the head of the piece doesn't have enough wrist presence to carry off the 20 to 18 taper. I think it looks too straight and parallel. Had they used a 20 to 16, it would have looked far more aesthetically pleasing, although the clasp is very well proportioned, it's the correct length and also the correct width. So, very comfortable piece to wear. It's only 147 grams with all the links in the Oyster style bracelet, and 147 gives a nice feeling of wrist presence and quality without being top heavy. It feels very well balanced. The balancing could have been improved if they'd used 20 to 16 because the bracelet does feel slightly heavy particularly at the 18mm class bend, I think had they used 16 it would have better balanced the piece. But it is comfortable to wear for long periods of time, such as 8-12 to 12 hours per day. The clear AR coating does an outstanding job of reducing the reflection. So the legibility is outstanding. There's a nice contrast between the old Radium X1 Swiss Superluminova on the Arabic numerals and the syringe hands, and also the Swiss Superluminova matte white dial. Legibility is good, easy to read the date complication, 22nd of the month with the fluorescent orange date indicator. Very low profile, that's something I really like about it. Needless to say, at 10.6 at mm thick, this will easily slip underneath a shirt cuff. Had they used the NH35A, this would be 12 to 13 mm thick, but 10.6 is very impressive for an automatic piece. 100 meters of water resistance is very good. So I'll show you the crown execution, just bear with me and I'll put my glove back on and then continue. So the solid screw down crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters, which is good specification for a daily wear piece. Let's test the screw down crown execution. So coin edge finish to it, 
and interestingly they've also inlaid it with X1 radium superluminova as you can see which matches the applied Arabic numerals and also the syringe hands. So let's test the action, absolutely silky smooth. This is perfect interface between the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. 100 meters is good specification. In the first position, one can manually wind the Miyota Calibre 9015 automatic. One can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up. It feels nice and smooth to manually wind. The 9015 is one of my personal favorite Miyota calibers. It's a premium version of Miyota movement and it's a level above lower versions such as the 8215 and 8315 respectively. Pulling it out to the first click position is the quick set date complication. Now if I rotate the crown clockwise, if you look at the date complication, you can see the fluorescent orange date indicator cycles through anti-clockwise. So it works in reverse to the crown. When one rotates the crown clockwise, it advances the date complication anti-clockwise. Makes a refreshing change from using a date window and having a date complication at 3 o'clock or 6 o'clock as per convention. I really like this aspect of MMI watches as I've detailed using an index date wheel with the 31 days of the month on the dial in the centre. I think it's very interesting. And the legibility of the fluorescent orange indicator is very good. One can easily read the day of the month. It feels out very smooth to click over to the next day of the month. And I really like the 9015 because it's got a nice positive quick set complication. As you can see, we're now back to the 22nd of the month. Pulling it out to the second click position is the time setting position. And if you look closely at the arrowhead's second hand, you can see it's now stopped dead. It's, possibly, it's possible to set the time precisely to the second. The 9015 has hacking. Silky smooth, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Nice light resistance to the gearing, there's no friction. It feels smoother than an NH35A. I regard the 9015 to be a premium, higher grade of movement than the 35A. So they've made the correct choice by using the 9015 versus the 35A. No back play, clockwise and anti-clockwise. And this is something, again, I really like about the 9015. With lower grade Miyota movements, such as the 8215 and the 8315 respectively, they have back play in the crown. When one rotates the crown clockwise and anti-clockwise, there is some play. One has to take up the slack before the minute hand responds. But with the 9015 and the 9039, which is the no date version, it doesn't have that back play. There's an immediate response from the crown when one moves it. So the 9015 is an absolute pleasure to set the time. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. So let's test screwing the crown back down. Immediate thread pickup. This is 10 out of 10 screw down crown execution and MMI deserve credit for a very well executed screw down crown. 100 meters of hermetic seal is excellent. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, it has not disappointed. So we've got a fully loomed Swiss Superluminova dial. As you can see, in daylight conditions, it's matte white, but as you can see, it's glowing like BGW9. The dial is glowing brightly in blue and it contrasts very well with the Arabic numerals which are applied and then infilled with old radium X1 Swiss superluminova. So perfect color tone match between the X1 old radium on the applied Arabic numerals and also the syringe hands. The legibility is outstanding and one can also even read the date complication in the dark because they've used fluorescent orange for the date indicator and if you look closely you can see we're now on the 22nd of the month. The hands are correctly proportioned because the minute hand which is syringe tipped, extends all the way to the minute ticks on the chapter ring. And if you look at the hour hand, which is also syringe tipped, you can see it extends to the date window, the date wheel in the center of the dial. The arrowhead's second hand extends all the way to the chapter ring, so they deserve credit for the correct proportions of the hands, correct proportions of the Arabic numerals. Now the dial is glowing incredibly brightly, and this is the benefit of using a fully loomed Swiss Superluminova dial. And it's really like a torch glowing in the dark. It's, in terms of brightness, it's like Seiko Luma Bright, or alternatively BGW9 Superluminova. It really is very impressive. 
And I like the legibility of it. Um, I think this is outstanding. And MMI deserve credit for a very, very well executed fully loomed dial. And also correct choice because the X1 old radium superluminova contrasts very well with the blue superluminova used on the dial. Right, so let's discuss the movement use because it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece. So this uses the Miyota Calibre 9015 automatic, which is made in Japan. It's a reliable, well-proven workhorse movement, which has been in use since 2009. So at this stage, it's very well proven. It has 24 joules and it runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz. It has hand winding and hacking, which is used for complications, and also a quick set complication, which I've demonstrated. It works very well. 42-hour power reserve is perfectly acceptable. The stated accuracy of the 9015 is minus 10 to plus 30 seconds per day. Now, MMI are well regulating the 9015 they're using. This one is running consistently at plus 2 seconds per day when it's fully wound to its maximum 42 hours. So that is outstanding accuracy. It's within chronometer limits of minus 4 to plus 6. Plus 2 from a 9015 is outstanding. I regard the 9015 to be equal in quality to Swiss movements such as the SW200-1 or alternatively the ETA2824-2. It is a premium grade of Miyota movement. The 9015 is definitely a level above lower grade Miyota calibers such as the 8215 and the 8315 respectively. Now with the 8000 series of movements such as the 8215, they have a characteristic noisy rotor and one can hear the rotor spinning round on wrist which is irritating. The 9000 series such as the 9015 used in this piece and the no date version of it, the 9039, they have a quieter rotor and I prefer the fact that this is quieter on wrist. One cannot hear the rotor spinning clockwise and anti-clockwise. The negative of the 9015 is it is unidirectional winding. It's not bi-directional and therefore not as efficient. So the rotor needs, needs to spin clockwise in order to wind the movements. When the rotor spins anti-clockwise, it has negligible winding effect. So it's not as efficient as a bi-directional automatic, but however, I do like the fact it's quieter. The build quality, quality control and finishing and materials of the 9015 are a level above the 8215. So it is the correct choice. The thing I most like about the 9015, as I've detailed, is it is more low profile than the NH35A. So the benefit of using the 9015 is MMI have been able to reduce the thickness of this piece down to only 10.6 millimetres. That is the kind of thickness one would expect with a quartz powered or manual wind piece. To get an automatic with a rotor on the underside with 100 metres of water resistance, that is only 10.6 is very impressive. So it's a very low profile piece and therefore it easily slips underneath the shirt cuff it doesn't feel top heavy and i really like that aspect of it it does feel very well balanced at 147 grams so no negatives to the 9015 other than that it's unidirectional winding and i think they deserve credit because it is a high grade of miota movements and they could have used the cost cutting measure of using the seiko nh35a so last i'll summarize the piece what do i think of it overall well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch for my channel, the watch meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So this will be available on pre-order on the 1st of December for €293. Euro. That's the price point. I think the quality is excellent, but however, I think the value can only be described as OK. I'm not going to say it's good value and I'm not going to say it's excellent value at €293 Euro because this does face some stiff competition. Yes, the specification is strong because we have the 9015 movements, clear AR coating, Swiss Superluminova fully loomed dial and we also have old radium X1 Swiss Superluminova on the dial and hands. So the quality of the Superluminova is top grade, the quality of the movements is premium and I think it's a very well made piece but however I can only say the value is okay at €293. Euro. I think MMI should consider reducing the price point of the piece within the low tier to below €250 Euro in order to make it more competitive. So I'm going to recommend it to you for consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the MMI Skyhunter. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.